In this tutorial, I'll be walking through how to use some of the new tools in Adobe After Effects Beta to integrate 3D animation seamlessly into any video, whether it's a professional stock video or a shaky mobile video. By the end, you'll have your own 3D elements flying across your footage like a pro. All right, the first thing we need is some video footage. You can either use stock footage or your own video. But the important thing is to select something that works within the 3D element you want to add. We'll go up to the file import and load our video footage. Over on the left, you'll want to right click on your video and select the new comp from selection. Because the 3D tracking process, as well as the processing power that it takes for 3D elements, it's best to shorten your clip to get a faster result. So I will drag the end clip into about 15 seconds, then go up to trim to work area. Then you'll need to pre-compose your layer. Move all attributes into the new composition. Next, we'll go up to Animation Track Camera. It should populate your video with a bunch of colorful X's. Based on the amount of detail within the video, and as you move your cursor over them, you will see that a target appears representing your ground plane. When you have one that looks like a match, you'll right click and go to Set Ground Plane and Origin. Hit OK. Then right click again and go to Create Shadow Catcher, Camera and Light. Now let's import some 3D models. Let's try the Rhino. We can right click within the project pane on the left, go to Import File. We are looking for a GLTF file, which will allow After Effects to read the 3D model the textures and animations all within one import. We'll drag it down into our composition layer, just above the shadow catcher layer. OK. Depending on the size of the model, how it was scaled within 3D software it was created, you'll probably have to scale it down a little bit in order to see it. In the case of this rhino, I will size it based on the surrounding like a tree or the bench to approximate how large she needs to be. And you'll notice as I scroll through the footage, he stays stuck on that one point as he is now in a 3D world on its path. Let's figure out what we want him to do. Let's create a starting point for where he'll be at the beginning of the footage and the direction we want him to be walking in when we continue to adjust the gizmo to make him line up. Now select the shadow catcher and adjust it to make sure that it will always be under the rhino throughout his animation, because this is where his shadow will be rendered. Under light options, if you go to the right panel, we will select environment from the dropdown list. Make sure Cast Shadows is turned on, and we can adjust the shadow darkness. But we see that the shadow is a little bit off and not matching to his feet. So we can also change the rotation based on the light of our scene when we adjust the position of the shadow catcher. We can now move the shadow up and down and make sure that it lines up properly with the base of his feet. And I'll continue to scale it to adjust it so that the shadow will not be cut off by the edges of the boundary of the catcher. In Advanced Render Options, select Fit Scene. This will sometimes fix any issues with it lining up as well. If we select under Animation Options on the Rhino, we see that we have a drop-down list of what's available. Once we select the animation, it automatically shows up. But of course, he's moving. He's not actually <clears throat> walking along the path because this walk is a cycle. We want to extend the cycle out so that it continues to loop. So we'll go up to Layer, Time Enable, Time Remapping. Now we can go down to the layer, drag it out for how long it needs to be, 
and then just copy and paste the two keys that we see and drag them out. Now we have a continuous walking rhino making his way down the path, sort of, right now. Looks like he's on an invisible treadmill, so we need to actually key the position of his entire body. <clears throat> You're going to take the beginning key and scroll back and forth to test it out. If you want to play it a little bit faster, you can press the Draft 3D, which gets rid of the shadow calculation so that you can just test the motion. Now I just need to make some fine adjustments to these keys to make sure that they're lined up properly and his walk is looking a little bit better. If he's sliding too much, that means you need to extend the path out to move him further. You can switch to two views over on the lower right of the viewport, and you can choose your camera so you get a better view of how you can move your model. Once we've figured out the movement, we can turn the shadows back on. Let's crop our clip again for this demo to make the footage even shorter by going up to Trim Comp to Work Area. And now we're going to make some further adjustments to the Rhino by adding some effects to him. But first we need to pre-compose this whole composition. and we're going to rotoscope just the rhino and put him on a new layer so that we can use the roto brush. This will give us control of just him so that we can add any kind of effect that we need to add and adjust the lighting and fine tune the overall look. So I will double click on the layer and select the roto brush in the window to the left. I will now take my green brush and loosely fill in the area of the rhino. It will automatically figure out his outline. If I hit Alt, the brush turns red and I can eliminate any spillover. Let's go ahead and save this before we get any further. The rotor brush is populating the rest of the footage with the outline of the rhino, and we can test it by moving the cursor to see how accurate the rotoscope was. We can also move to the other composition on the left and turn off the layer underneath to see how good the rhino looks isolated. We can see some little pops and edges that need to be cleaned up. So we will go back to the right screen and we're gonna use the refine brush. When we click the rotor brush button, we see that the drop down list, there's the one underneath. We can now just draw around the edges and we see a black and white mask appear. This cleans up such uh, little things like his ears and the tip of his horn. You can see as we scroll through the footage, it's created a mask that stays with the model and does a really nice job of fine tuning the outline. It's now ready to add some effects. So let's go to the effect color correction levels. Let's drag the middle points in a little bit to the left to make it lighter, to the right to make it darker and let's find the perfect tone.
Let's go back and choose Blur and Sharpen and go down to Gaussian Blur because the footage is slightly blurry. We need to match the rhino to the background by getting rid of some of his detail. This is looking a lot more integrated and like he's actually belongs to the scene. And there we have it. We have a 3D rhino taking a stroll down a downtown park. <laughs>